Hi guys, wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, in this video looking at the transition. Um, there's a lot of things going along online at the moment where a certain type of transition is being championed, if you will, uh, and made out to be the way to move at the start of the downswing. Uh, what I've done here is I took the opportunity to look at let you look at two players I've worked with currently, uh, Tom on the left and Anthony on the right, thanks to both of them for allowing me to use the footage during this video. Um, just to look at how you know one transition and one position at the top isn't going to suit all players. Tom demonstrates nicely the type of transition that is being currently championed, which would be uh, from the top of the backswing, the arms have been sort of lifted slightly, so they're swinging on a slightly steeper plane than the shoulders. Uh, there's a little bit more separation between the torso and the right elbow. And this wouldn't, most of you who work with me knows that know that this wouldn't be the sort of norm. However, based on the movement that Tom then makes, I don't mind him achieving that position at the top. Um, so it's all about what you can do. Um, some players can do it, some players can't. So with Tom, he will make this transition where the butt of the club works towards the ball. The sweet spot starts to work under a little bit more and this is achieved by the right elbow rotating externally and consequently the right shoulder working externally during the transition so Tom is able to make that move consequently the P4 that he arrives at is very appropriate for him Nothing gets at hand, club doesn't drop behind him too much. P5 is nice and neutral, if anything, a little bit high. Very in line coming in at P6. So there's no real issue with Tom lifting the golf club based on the transition he's able to make in a very controlled manner. The other thing that Tom tends to do there is put a little bit more bowing in that left wrist as he transitions so makes a lot of the moves uh, that a lot of people online are talking about being being sort of must haves if you want to hit the golf ball well but the club working outwards sweet spot laying down right elbow right shoulder working externally in the early part of the downswing now the flip side of this would be someone like Anthony who arrives in a pretty good looking position at that point uh, during the swing on the grand scheme of things based on what a lot of people would prefer to see. So the arms are slightly higher than the shoulders. And the issue we have here is that Anthony then continues to lift the arms. And then during transition, as he tries to relocate the right arm against the torso, you can see that the club doesn't work outwards. It works straight down. The sweet spot lays down far more than what we saw with Tom. And the club then starts to get too much on the inside, dropping beneath the right forearm. And then the swing direction is too much out to the right. So what we're looking at here is a player who attempts to make the same move that Tom does but isn't as good at doing that so the arms lift a little bit more the right elbow is working in a very similar manner as is the right shoulder but he's not able to control it and execute it quite as much or quite as well should I say and everything drops behind him too much We've got a player here who can who can make the moves, but can't really control those moves um, to a good enough degree to play the type of golf that he wants to play. So Tom's a plus handicap amateur golfer. Uh, Anthony's a professional golfer, and obviously both need to have a degree of power, but also a degree of precision. So uh, I think it's fair to say that most good players who come to see you will have adequate power else he wouldn't be a good player to start with 
it's nice if you can increase the power a little bit. Uh, but most of the time, you get a good player walking into your studio or onto your range. They're looking to improve the, the direction of the goal shots primarily. So we've got a player here who can make the same move that Tom's making. But can't carry it out with the same degree of precision. So the approach we then took with Anthony was to, and I'll just get this, this was later in the session. Let's make that a little bit larger. We've got the bar to the left in line with the left shoulder just to help Anthony lower the exit. Uh, that was an ongoing process and a feel uh, to help him reduce the rate of closure, etc. And what we've done now is we've got Anthony to swing to a position that is much deeper. So the butt of the club now, rather than being above the right shoulder, is behind the right shoulder. And as a result, the sweet spot is already a little bit deeper than it would be normally. So we've almost we've had, well we have actually preset this sort of external rotation of the right elbow. So rather than Anthony having to try and work this elbow in during transition, which causes the butt of the club to drop in behind him, right shoulder to work down too quickly, sweet spot to drop behind him too much. All that's now in place and Anthony is in a position where he can actually just unwind, sweet spot doesn't lay down anywhere near as quick. But the club starts to work downwards and outwards a little bit more rather than just straight down. Club doesn't drop in behind him quite as much. And the swing direction is a little bit less out to the right. So we've got two players, one who can do the move with a level of precision that's required. And then another one who can do the move that's being championed by many, but can't control that move. So rather than trying to put a move in that's quite high maintenance, what we're going to look at is putting the player in a position at P4 that allows him to achieve the type of geometry he wants at P5 without making that move that requires... Uh, the sweet spot to lay down, the elbow to externally rotate, etc, etc. Because when Anthony's doing that, the club's dropping under too much. Whereas when Tom does it, he's able to control what the sweet spot's doing better than what we see with Anthony. So both need a slightly different, or both would be allowed to have a slightly different position at the top based on what they are able to do in transition. Uh, what I want to look now is at a player who who can work that elbow and that shoulder externally quite as well as these two guys and obviously let you look at the changes we made with him as well. So we have Mark. Um, Mark's in a position now where he is not really able to work this elbow, work the right elbow the way that People are advising golfers to do. So what tends to happen with Mark is from the top, or what used to happen with Mark from the top, the right elbow wouldn't rotate externally. It would stay very high. Shaft would enter at P5, the right shoulder, and then the club would start falling onto the left arm, club out in front of the hands at P6, and that had its subsequent problems. So... Mark is higher at P4, again, which is being championed by a lot of people online at the moment, but then has an inability to shallow things out in the desired manner from P4 to P5. Now, you could work on trying to get the player to shallow the sweet spot out a little bit, to work the ball of the club down a little bit, to externally rotate the right elbow a little bit more, etc, etc. Uh, that's an approach you could take, it's an approach we explored with Mark, 
and we quickly found that that's something that he's not really very good at doing uh, and there's a lot of frustration involved with that because you're putting a lot of hours in working on the range on a move that's, that's I suppose you could say is valid, it's correct uh, but it's just not suitable for, for what, to what you're capable of doing. So what we've done here with Mark, again, similar to Anthony, is uh, for different reasons. Anthony was almost like too good at doing it. So he would get the move in and do it too much. Uh, you had Tom who would put the moves in and do them correctly. And here we've got Mark who has a sort of inability to put that move in consistently, especially when he's under the gun playing in tournament goal. So what we've done here is... We've preset that position at the top, so the right elbow is in more. The right shoulder is externally rotated more due to a backswing that's a little bit deeper. And what we've also done here is we've shortened the backswing, so we're not allowing the club to travel quite as far, so that sweet spot is already in behind the hands at that point. From there, Mark's, Mark's capable of just unwinding the body doesn't need to worry too much about the arms, it's already preset. So rather than here, put the club working forward, speed spot working forward, shaft setting steep, coming through the right shoulder. Mark now has preset everything. So the right elbow at the top of the backswing is more externally rotated, as is the right shoulder. The sweet spot's more behind the hands due to the shorter backswing. And from there, Mark can unwind, make a very similar movement and get a completely different looking P5 where the shaft is shallower, resulting in a club that starts to get onto the right forearm more during the downswing. And the sweet spot that is in behind the hands more at P6. So, you know, looking at this, it depends on the player's abilities to do certain things. Some players are very good at doing certain moves and doing them to a, a high level of precision. It's fine. If that works, that's great. Uh, as per with Tom, I don't have any problem with Tom's swing being a little bit more upright than what I would teach most people because he can then make the subsequent moves that make that work. Uh, with Anthony, he was trying to put the move that was required in but would overdo it. So for him, we get the top of the backswing a little bit deeper eliminate the need to put that move in so that he can concentrate on the rotational aspect of the swing. With Mark, he understands the principle obviously of trying to externally rotate the right elbow and shoulder in transition, uh, get the sweet spot laying down, uh, but isn't terribly good at executing that. We get the club out in front of him, swing directed too much to the left. So what we're doing there with Mark is presetting the position we need uh, during the transition, so almost like doing away with that, that move that's it's been talked about a lot with the elbow and the shaft and the, and the hands, if you will. Um, putting that in there early and just allowing Mark to keep it there throughout the downswing. So is there a desired P4? I would say I've got my preferences, certainly, um, based on what I see most people uh, are capable of doing. I think most people struggle with the transition that's being championed at the moment. Um, most good players tend to overdo it. Most lesser players just can't do it. So I would say a slightly deeper P4 with slightly more pressure in the right arm against the torso where the butt of the club is slightly behind the right shoulder would be my preference. But it's a preference based on what I want to see in transition and where I want the club at P5 and P6. Um, so the type of transition needs to complement where you are at P4 and the P4 that you arrive at needs to complement what you're able to do in transition, whether that be via your golfing ability or physical limitations that you may have, um, every, everybody's different. So there is no one transition that's going to work. There is no one P4 that's ideal for everybody. Uh, the two need to complement one another. Oh, this helps um, clear things up a little bit for you. Uh, just my take on something that's online at the minute that I think is getting. You know, almost like one transition is being tried try to take one transition to everybody, uh, and it's just not going to work. And most of the time, this transition is being pitched to people under the premise of improving speed. And whilst we do like to increase a player's club head speed, um, your average golfer can increase ball speed by learning to hit the middle of the club more consistently. Um, and your tournament golfer 
really tends to not need that much more speed. If you can get some, great. Uh, they've already got speed, else they wouldn't be tournament golfers. They need to improve the precision. Uh, consequently, if you can get a move from P4 to P5 that's lower maintenance, that's easier for them to repeat, that's more appropriate for the type of shot pattern they want to play, then that's going to bode well for the future. Good luck with it. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop me an email, a text, or get in touch through Twitter or Facebook.